Hello and welcome to Conversations. Uh, this is a series of interviews we are recording from Dubai, where we are at the IATA World Cargo Symposium. And with me today is uh, Crawford Hamilton, Head of Freighter Marketing at Airbus. Crawford, as always, a pleasure to have you for this conversation. Great to be here. Great to be here. Crawford, uh, give us an update on A350 Freighter program. There's been a lot of things that are happening in terms of advancement in the final assembly line. What is the status? Well, it's getting to the exciting time. The exciting time is when we start to build the aeroplane. So at the moment, we are uh, taking the sections, uh, assembling the sections at various plants all over, all over Europe. They'll then start to move their way towards Toulouse, where we will start final assembly uh, this year, sometime after the summer. Uh, that will then, will then build, actually build the airplane there, bring all the sections, the wings, everything together. And then uh, we'll start to look towards uh, next year when we'll do, start to do our development flying. Uh, and then with that, we can go through that program, type certificate, and then entry into service in the second half of 2027. Do you have a much more realistic timelines as far as the entry into service is concerned for A350 Freighter? Um, I think what we've had is systemic issues within the supply chain. And with that, uh, they were not necessarily envisaged back in 2021 when we launched. And now I think with the way that there's, it's starting to settle down, plus the fact that now Airbus is uh, purchasing parts of Spirit, Spirit where uh, obviously we have a large amount of not just 350 uh, going on. That means that we can now take a little bit more control of where we are within that supply chain. And therefore, when we're uh, forecasting, when we're looking at EIS now, is that is a realistic timeline. And that's what we're telling our customers indeed. Okay, just to clarify in terms of what was the original original timelines, we have you're delayed by about a year and a half or delayed by about a year and a half, yeah. Yeah. Um in terms of supply chains for aerospace industry, which has been under stress for uh, several, several yeah. months, uh, as have things improved or changed or things remain the same? I think the thing in supply chains is that it was very unprecedented what was happening after COVID. And as the way we've come out COVID, there is a lack of labor. There's a lack of skilled labor. So there's a lot of make, making up to be doing. But as you hire people, as people come into it, they're learning the job and they're getting better at it. And we have a, a large number of people in our procurement department who are looking after the supply chain to make sure that they don't become issues, to make sure that we have a close view, we have a watchtower on what's going on, and that we can predict anything that's happening. So really, from our point of view, it's getting a certainty into the supply chain and making sure that it can keep on improving over the next few years. Uh, there's also a challenge in the industry, in the world today, because of the trade tariffs, uh, something that is constantly evolving. What do you hear, what do you hear today is not what do you hear tomorrow. Um, uh, how concerned are you about your supply chains in the short to mid term? I think there's always concern, but as I said, we have people in our procurement department to make sure that that is always looked after. I think from our perspective on the 350, uh, we know that um, there's still a need for aeroplanes. Uh, there's 130 aircraft that are over 30 years, large freighters that are over 30 years old. We know that uh, we're in a growth industry. No matter what, it has its ups and downs, but we're in a growth industry and it will, it will, keep, and it will keep growing. So from that point of view, our confidence is very high about the future. And um, give us a sense of your order book as of now for A350. And I also believe um, your competitor, which has basically dominated the, the freighter, freighter market, uh, uh, are there more orders coming in? What is the status of your order book as of now for A350 Freighter? Well, the order book is, is in, a, in a very good position at the moment. Uh, we, have set, we have orders from all over the world. Uh, we have orders with all cargo carriers, uh, Siltway and, um, and CMA CGM. 
we have orders with combination carriers where they're operating both passenger, their freight business is based on the passenger aircraft and main deck freight. So we've got people like uh, Starlux, we've got Cathay, we've got Singapore Airlines. Uh, we've then moving through, we've obviously very locally here, we have, uh, we have Etihad, just up the road we've got Turkish. Then uh, we've also got, uh, I'm sorry, here I've got to really think now because we've got so many customers, we get 10 customers in total. Uh, we've also got uh, Martin Air KLM and also, also Air France. And with, with having all these customers, 63 aircraft in the bag, plus ALC as a leasing company for people for alternative uh, acquisition strategies for these aircraft. Well, that means we've got a good, we've got a very good base. So we've got uh, nearly double the customers of, of the other guys, which we're really happy because we're an entrant into this market, but we know we've got to have a really good product to do that. And I think having more endorsements is really, really important in terms of that and people showing the confidence in both the platform in Airbus and the fact that we can produce a really good large freighter. Has there been any change in the features from, from, the, from the last iteration that you have done? No, is there... no, I mean, now, now we've finished the design stage. Okay. Now where we are, and this is what we've been talking about with supply chain, is industrialization. Yeah. Getting these first uh, two prototype aircraft built, uh, one of which will be painted in the prize winning livery that we had at the Paris Air Show, uh, what, just getting on for two years ago now, uh, and getting ready for that first flight. When would that be? First flight will be next year. Next year. Yeah. And uh, how aggressively are you pitching to Emirates? Uh, because they, they start operating A350 passenger version. Um, Emirates have obviously got a large uh, freighter fleet. Um, obviously, we talk to all uh, stakeholders here, and uh, when Emirates are ready to hopefully make a decision, it's 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 totally in their in their ballpark at the moment. Uh, Crawford, in terms of also the future of freighters, uh, what is the kind of demand that you see? In, again, given the kind of uh, diversification of manufacturing that happens, uh, uh, how important? I'm sure the main deck carriers, uh, main deck uh, capacity is so, so important. How is that changing over the next maybe two years or three years? I think at the moment it's, it's as again, it's back, we're back to that theme of it being a long-term business. I, I think uh, when we look at main deck, I think obviously quite a lot of these aircraft that are over 30 years may end up being 33 years, 35 years. So some of them are going to stay in. The demand is clearly there. There are lots of the e-commerce market is large. There are lots of short-term perturbations in the market at the moment. Uh, there are lots going on at the moment. I think one of the themes we hear here at IATA is that, no, I don't quite know what the answer is. And I think there's a general consensus that we don't quite know what the answer is. But what it means is for us looking at the longer term, we still are, firm in the demand, we see a demand for small, medium and large freighters. If we focus on large freighters, uh, 620 aircraft, um, round about, some of them will naturally be, uh, we see as being conversions when these aircraft eventually uh, certificate. So, you know, the market will carry on growing. Uh, there will be new converted freighters and new line built freighters in the market. So really, when you start to look at it, it's a long-term game. If we, go, if we go start to look at the next two or three years, it may not be representative of actually what's going to happen over the longer term. Since you're talking about the converted freighters, you, you have uh, Airbus products that are available in the, in the converted freight, yes. A320, A321, A330. Do you, what do you see the, the future for those, those three categories? Well, I think when you start to look at them, uh, we're now got 110 aircraft in operation. Uh, it's been, we've been keeping it a little bit quiet, but we know we, again, it's part of our freighter strategy to get market share there. Uh, and our colleagues at EFW are busy converting all over the world. Uh, we're seeing there was a bit of oversupply uh, due to some, probably an over, no, over conversion in the back of COVID. Now that's starting to come out in the market, and we're starting to see it come alive a little bit again. Uh, in, the, in the smaller freighters. In the medium-sized freighters, 
where, where we, roughly where we, we thought we'd be and round about now, we're starting to see 767 feedstock run out. Uh, and now we're uh, looking at 330s going forward. We're engaging new operators, uh, people like Amazon and such like, which is ringing endorsements when you're getting Amazon, you're getting mass air, quite a lot of interest over, over in the Americas, interest in China as well. So, you know, really starting to get a robust uh, operator base there. Of course, locally, uh, Egypt Air with their uh, 330, the 330 200. So overall, we're very happy at the way that market is going. As I said, about, about uh, split half and half between the, the small freighters and the medium-sized freighters. So yeah, we're, 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 in, we're in the market. We've got a, we're starting to build a good market share and we're gonna keep going. Do you see a potential for an A330 because you have an A330 new on the passenger side that's yeah. being built? Do you see a, a medium-sized new production freighter on the A330? I think the, the big thing there is you need stars to align and we need the market to be in the right place. We need uh, launch operators to be in the right place. So when that happens, uh, we would look at the business case and if it's a good business case, we'd go for it. Uh, Crawford, I, I think before we end this conversation, I think a lot of the, the, the viewers do not know what actually is the process. So now that you have the assembly lines, if you can just briefly tell what is the process still that aircraft becomes commercially operational? Okay, so what we have to go through is, first of all, as I said, we have to gather everything in Toulouse. So we have plants uh, all over Europe that take things from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, and then they come to Toulouse. They go on to what's known as our final assembly line, where yeah. we also currently assemble our A350 passenger aircraft. Yeah. Uh, we will then basically join up these pieces. They come fully equipped with everything in them. It's all tested. We then plug them together. I would say like a big Lego kit, but that's yeah. probably not the right way to put it. I think I'm probably offending <laughs> our people in production because it's, right. it's, it's a tough job. Uh, the aircraft will then uh, be, rolled out, be rolled out of where it's been assembled and then we'll start to test it. And we do standard testing, fuel testing, pressurization testing and such like. Uh, in that process, during that process, we'll also paint it. Uh, we then start to move towards a lot of ground testing to make sure that everything works properly and we're in a su suitable position to sign off for the first flight. We'll then have a first flight, which is usually a little bit gentler than the full flight test program. Uh, and we're not doing a full flight test program here because of course, this is a derivative of, of the 350 yeah. 1000, which already has a type yeah. certificate. Uh, we'll then uh, do, the, do a little bit of flight testing. We're also going to do a lot of testing on uh, the door, uh, on the floor, and uh, take customer inputs there. In addition, we're, that's in addition to what we are already do on the ground, on ground test rigs. So this is a completion of a whole process to get there, to get something that is reliable, something that is above all, very much above all safe, to ensure that we have a really, really good aircraft. And then we'll go towards a certification with the ASA in Europe. Yeah. And then after that, it's a matter of uh, getting the first customers to take delivery. And then also we usually do some uh, post uh, certification testing that improves things like the flight envelope and such like over, 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 over the period. And then after that, um, we have to then keep delivering. And your first delivery is to? First deliveries where uh, people, the entry into service will be very much focused on Singapore Airlines and CMA, CGM. Okay. Crawford, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much. Good to see you again. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. That's an A350? That's an A350 sock. <laughs> That's the design <laughs> by the boys in, uh, boys in Calgary. <laughs> there we are. There we are. I met them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So we took that, we took that and we, uh, we put it into sock. <laughs>